In this video, we'll review the data from the evaporation lab. Hopefully, you generated a graph that looks like this. We have temp time on the x-axis and temperature on the y-axis. Now, you know that the slope of the line, the slope of any of these lines for that matter, it tells us how fast the temperature changed over time or how much evaporation there was over time. You also know that the strength of the intermolecular force is related to how fast the liquid vaporized. So think about intermolecular forces as attracting molecules together almost like a bunch of magnets would, 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 pull, would pull together. So a strong intermolecular force means that that substance is, is likely a liquid because it's held together tightly. A weak intermolecular force means that not that much energy is required to escape the attractive force and enter the gas phase. So do we have that established? A stronger intermolecular force means less evaporation. A weak intermolecular force means more evaporation. And the steeper the slope, the more evaporation we had. So the steeper the slope, the weaker the intermolecular force. All right, let's take, a, let's take a look at our six substances. Of the six, four of them end in all. The ones that end in all, you know, are alcohols. Methanol, ethanol, propanol, and butanol. You know that methanol has one carbon and would exhibit hydrogen bonding. Ethanol has two carbons and would also exhibit hydrogen bonding. Propanol has three carbons and hydrogen bonding, and butanol has four carbons and hydrogen bonding. We also have two straight-chain alkanes, pentane and hexane. Pentane's got five carbons, and hexane has six carbons. Now, you know that the steeper the slope, the weaker the intermolecular force. So, let's try to rank these in terms of um, which molecules, sorry, which substances would have um, the strongest and weakest intermolecular forces. Now, we know that hydrogen bonding is a strong intermolecular force, and four of the six have hydrogen bonding. We also know that the more carbons a molecule has, the more London dispersion forces it will have. So, hydrogen bonding and a high number of carbons means strong intermolecular force. And in fact, that's what we see here with butanol. Butanol has four carbons and hydrogen bonding. And look at its slope. It's a gentle slope, meaning it did not evaporate very quickly at all. It has a weak intermolecular force, and most of the liquid stayed in the liquid phase. The next steepest slope would be propanol. Propanol has three carbons and hydrogen bonding. And then probably the next steepest slope would be ethanol. Ethanol has two carbons and hydrogen bonding. Now we get into hexane, methanol, and pentane. They all kind of have similar slopes. So let's see if we can maybe explain that. Well, pentane has five carbons, and hexane has six carbons. So let's look at the purple slope compared to the red slope. But if you look closely, the purple slope is just a little bit steeper, meaning that it evaporated just a little bit quicker. And that's what we would expect when comparing five carbons to six carbons. Five carbons would have weaker London dispersion forces and would evaporate quicker, so a steeper slope. Now, let's also look at methanol. Methanol's slope um, is an orange right there. Methanol's slope I would say is pretty comparable to the slope that we find on hexane. So hexane has six carbons, and methanol has one carbon. The difference, of course, is in the hydrogen bonding. So remember, when you're looking at slope, slope tells us the strength of the intermolecular force. The steeper the slope, the weaker the intermolecular force.